Hi, in today's video I'll show you how I made this Red Hood inspired chest armor out of EVA foam. This project started a couple days ago as just a concept drawing I had done. But I went through the process of patterning and then constructing this chest armor out of EVA foam. The materials I used in this project were mostly EVA foam floor mats as well as some scrap EVA foam I had laying around. So the cost of this project was extremely low and I didn't use any special equipment or tools to make it. So this process can be followed at home very cheaply. So I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. So last year for my friend's birthday I made him a red hood helmet. So this year I figured why not make the chest armor. To do that I'm going to use foam and I'm going to do my own design. I'm not going to use anybody's design that's already on the internet. So what I've done is in uh, Autodesk sketchbook I've taken a picture of him holding a ruler across his chest so I can scale this properly and then drawn an armor that I thought looked cool over top. Now I need to cut this out and use it as stencils to make foam. Okay, so I just have a piece of this regular floor mat foam. This stuff was $10 for four pieces of this over at Harbor Freight, so it's really cheap. And this will be great to test things out before I use better, more expensive foam. Got my trusty knife. Perfect. Now to give this the shape it needs, I'm going to take my heat gun and my little foam ball that I use for shaping, heat it up, and form it. Okay, so now I want to make the piece that will be the shoulder part and allows this to stand proud. So this is Evil Ted's method for doing this kind of thing. So basically you just take this piece, a second piece of foam, pinning every so often to keep the shape that you want for the, the chest, holding it tightly up against it. And this will allow you to make a piece that contours perfectly to it and gives you the correct shape you're looking for. Now this has the exact contour I need to follow this the whole way. Okay, now I'm going to take these two paper templates together so I can get a rough idea of how I want to draw the shoulder socket in. Making the shoulder piece this way will ensure that both chest pieces share the exact same curvature. I'm 
just going to draw what I think the shoulder should look like, which should come down, Let's flare out a little bit, and then Now I'm cutting along this edge at a 45. And the rest are going to be at straight 90s. Okay. Now I'm going to glue these together to get a test fit and see how they look. So with most things I make out of foam, I'm going to be connecting it all together with contact cement and it will be applied to both sides, let to dry for about three, four minutes and then stuck together. And instead of using an acid brush, I'm applying this with foam. So now I have the left side done, and it looks reasonable. I don't know if this is the shape I'm gonna go with in the final, but now I'm going to flip it all over, do the right side, see how it all looks as one piece, and see if I need to adjust it from there. Okay, so I have both the chest pieces now. I'm gonna glue them together with contact cement and see how they look. Okay, so now I have a rough idea of how I want the main ad piece to go. So this is just going to be my test for the right side. Okay, so I'm just going to trace these muscle patterns on to see how they look. Instead of going through the effort of cutting them out just for this test piece. This will still accomplish the goal of seeing if they fit properly.
Okay, so two hours ago, this was just a drawing I had on Sketchbook, and now it's a physical object, and it it's pretty much exactly what I was going for. Um, it's a little too small for me, which is good because my friend I'm making it for is a little smaller than me. So now uh, I'm going to remake this, and I'm going to use uh, two millimeter foam for the ad ad pieces, and then ten keep using ten millimeter for the chest part and then these details will probably also be 10 millimeter foam but I'm really happy with this uh, time to keep going and here it is now I have a couple of gaps to fill on it um, I made this whole thing off camera just just because there's no need to show everything twice um, I have the back side of the floor mats facing out to give it a cool look and now this is ready to have its gaps filled and the seams fixed. And to do that, um, with my normal 3D prints, I would use Bondo or a Spot Putty. But for something like this, since it's flexible, you have to use um, caulk to fill it. So that's gonna be my next step. Then it's time to seal everything and start painting. So, time to fill the gaps. Okay, so now it's time to seal the chest armor. Normally I would use uh, Plasti Dip, but I just ran out, but I have this can of Rust-Oleum Peel Coat, which is Rust-Oleum's version of Plasti Dip from what I understand. Um, and I'm gonna use this to coat the whole thing. Um, normally I'd use white or black, but I have this red can, so it'll do. It's gonna get covered up totally, so. I'm gonna do that next, and I'm going to start with a dust coat and then a couple of full coverage coats. Uh, this will make sure it doesn't crack um, and help it apply more evenly. So, I'm going to do that next. Okay, so the chest armor is now sealed and primed. So now it's time to paint the whole thing black. And to do that, I'll be using Plaid FX Flexible Acrylics, and I'll be applying this with a foam brush. I would prefer a bigger brush when doing something like this, but this is all I have. So this will take a little longer, but should still get the same effect. So that's what I'll do next. Okay, so I've painted the whole thing black now. And now I need to paint the logo red. So I'm going to do that next. And then it's time to weather the whole thing and add um, the effect over the entire uh, rib surface.
Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use a chip brush like this with uh, metallic acrylic paint and I'm going to dry brush it over all of the textured areas. The way you dry brush is you take, you fill your brush and then wipe most of it off so there's very little pigment left on the brush and then you just lightly dust it over all of the high spots. Okay, so now I want to put a couple of bullet dents in because I think that would be cool. Um, and to do that, I'm going to take the back of this brush, dab it in, make a little dents. And one right here. Now I'm going to take a brighter silver. This is the same way I weather pretty much everything I make, but I've never actually weathered matte black onto gloss black before, so I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Okay, so I have this in a place where I really like it. So now I just need to figure out the attachment mechanism. So my plan is to use this imitation leather for the shoulder straps, and, uh, webbing for the chest strap, and elastic for the lower abdomen strap, and it will all be connected with these parachute clips. So I just need to connect all of this, and I plan on using uh, rivets as well to connect everything along with glue. So that's the plan, and uh, hopefully it works out. This doesn't need to be super precise. Um, <clears throat> and I just got these left-handed scissors so I don't have to kill my hands so, uh, cutting fabric with right-handed scissors, which is a bonus for me. And they're nice and sharp still. So I'm just going to hem this real quick in my machine. Okay, so now I've cut two 20 inch strips of this webbing that are going to get sewn onto these straps. Yeah, nothing fancy here. This is gonna be entirely hidden, but I just want it to be secure. Okay, so I have the straps made. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to super glue them into position so that I can then add the rivets that will actually hold them into place permanently. Um, I'm using, I'm not using snap rivets, I'm gonna use this type of, of rivet where you hammer it into place. Um, I'm just more comfortable with those and I think I should be able to get a better hold with them. That's what they look like riveted on. Okay, so now I'm gonna make the holes for the lower strap and I'm gonna use the punch for this one because it's a lot thinner and I need a super clean hole. this nice and snug. Perfect. And I'll just put a couple dots of super glue on. 
in there to make it really not want to go anywhere. Okay, so this thing is finished now. Um, the way it's all connected in the back, um, there's two straps running from the shoulders and then the chest piece runs all the way down. Um, I decided to not do the abdomen strap yet until I figure out what the belt configuration is going to be because depending on how that goes, I might need to change up the abdomen strap. But I'm thrilled with how this turned out. It took me about two days to take this from a concept drawing uh, to patterns to reality. Um, and that's including dry times for all the paint. So this is a process that you could bang out in a long weekend if you have a lot of free time or over a week and a half. There's, there's no not a large material cost preventing you from doing this. All Everything on this was done with either floor mats or scrap foam that I had laying around. The only thing I had to buy was the nylon webbing for the uh, for the back straps, but that was three dollars in material. So I hope this video was informative. I hope you either learned something from the patterning process, the painting process, or the foam assembly process. If you would like the patterns I made, I can easily publish those, but it'll take me a little while to digitize them, so I'm not going to do it unless it's requested. But if you enjoyed this video, uh, like, comment, subscribe and check out another one. Thanks.